it's Tuesday morning. Let me just get this into a better space on my screen. Yay! <sighs> so, how is everyone? Um, we are kind of wet here. Uh, we have, sorry, I'm just trying to find me on Facebook. Um, we haven't got rain at the moment. It's forecast again later. Um, currently, we have all sorts of flooding around the village. Uh, yesterday, and I'm assuming probably still today, we had um, our, the road between us and the next village flooded, closed by the um, local council. Uh, so well and truly flooded. There we go. Got me on my phone now. Um, there's. I posted a picture on my own timeline yesterday. Oh, let's tip that down a wee bit. It's a bit high. That's better. Um, I posted a picture on my timeline yesterday of a ditch at the end of our road, which is normally dry and it's running like nobody's business at the moment. So it's deep, it's fast running, um, it's ridiculous. Uh, there's, there's a wood near us called Neptune Wood and at the moment it is well, fray, uh, well named because it's about a foot deep in water. Um, I'm hoping to get there tomorrow, uh, later today to take some photos because it's unbelievable. Morning B, morning Valerie, morning Jan. Oh, I'm sorry it was late, Jan. And I can't believe that you are the age you are. That's just ridiculous. Very snowy in Yorkshire, Claire. Yeah, I saw some a photo from um, a friend of mine who is up in your neck of the woods and she had about four inches of snow. Uh, roads dry with you in Essex, but no no snow, but waterlogged gardens right round you. Yeah, I mean, I we've got fields that have got lakes in. It's just ridiculous. Um, I'm not seeing comments on my laptop. Let me just get those. That's better. So, yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Um, one of our one of our local residents who has lived here for longer than we have, um, did say something yesterday when the road was closed for the second time so far this year, uh, bearing in mind we're only just in February, um, aren't they dredging the, road, the, the River Thames anymore? Because that would stop it. No, no, it wouldn't. The flooding is on a floodplain. It's there for a reason. It is there specifically to deal with flooding. Anywho, um, morning Renee, or should I say afternoon, <coughs> evening, I'm thinking, no, I, I'm not even going to begin to think about what time it is. Uh, Anne, also from darkest, deepest, darkest Essex. Hello, hello. Um, so I'm, I'm having to read off my phone because I haven't got my glasses on um, and it's easier. Sunshine today, which is lovely in Essex. Yeah, we had sunshine first thing, but as I say, we have got sunshine and showers forecast for this afternoon. So I think we are going to have another wet walk, uh, which is fine. And I've got some new, th some new wool, um, furry wool uh, liners for my Wellington. So hopefully my feet will be nice and toasty this time. Uh, my previous liners for my Wellingtons have decided to give up the ghost. So I treated myself to some sheepskin ones. So morning Audrey, cold, frosty, four inches of snow from yesterday. Your granddaughter enjoyed sledding for the first time yesterday. Oh, brilliant, Audrey. That's lovely. Hello, Mary. And Wendy downpour, downpours in Swansea. Yeah, I mean, we had a we had torrential rain overnight. Fortunately, it seems to have dissipated a bit. I say overnight. Um, I was I was kind of nodding off. You know, when you're in that I'm nearly nodding off and suddenly there's something that wakes you up, wakes you up a lot and then it takes ages to get back to sleep. I was in that state and it was pouring down. We sleep in a downstairs room. Um, we're basically a bungalow, but we've got a little mezzanine uh, bit as well. Um, and our bedroom goes straight on to um, a sort of passageway. Um, sorry. No, that's being picked up by my husband, so that's fine because I'm not expecting any calls and he's no, he knows I'm on. 
but yeah we've got velux windows over the over the hallway and the noise on the veluxes was horrific um good diction yes i was brought up with um yeah well received english i think is what i is what i would call my accent and i used to do um amateur dramatics musical theater mostly and i've taken singing lessons so yes diction was very much the order of the day when i was a child i was a, i'm a child of the 50s so just uh, so i was my education was in the early 60s so nora's with us margaret's with us snowing with you margaret um are you standing or sitting i stand i always stand um i have sciatica so standing is always good for me um you've got flooding have you nora yes we have as well we would like rain it's dry yeah i know it's always that way i was saying to my husband yesterday as we were doing our walk we actually need to start saving the rain now for our garden for the summer because mother nature always evens out eventually so we will have a drought i mean we have masses and masses of water butts uh, but they are at full to overflowing so we need to be putting them into we've got some um plastic dustbins we need to be filling those up as well um and b thank you for sharing right okay i'm going to start in earnest um we always told to drop our local accent in primary school do you know i spent my my childhood wanting an accent but hey, there we go. Morning, Baz, you've shared too. So today we're going to use the Arranger Wreath stamp set uh, and die bundle. Um, it's not just for Christmas. Just saying, it's for Easter and all sorts of things. So I'm going to flip you down. I have started a few bits, um, but um, I haven't finalised everything yet. So my little tatty piece of washi tape will help stop any seasickness i hope let's oop the cable's a bit tied up bear with me so this is what i when i do my youtube i don't have to worry about this so much because i have two cameras um but i haven't worked out how to do the same thing on youtube yet uh facebook rather i think that's about as good as we're going to get so arrange a wreath um, so we've got in the stamps, oh, and I forgot to bring any inks over, never mind, that's easily resolved. We've got a wreath, we've got this, which I think is probably a crate, but I don't know. I think it's a crate for eggs, but I don't know. Uh, leaf, various sentiments, eggs, pears, flower, other leaf, uh, partridge, and this bit, which... I think is just a filler um, and then in the dies we have two wreaths um, and then dies that cut the eggs the pears the hearts um, the partridge the leaves and the flower plus some extra flowers and things so what i have already got done just so you know is oh i'm going to show you this first this is the pearlescent paper this is part of the sea and sand sand and sea um suite in the spring summer sorry january june catalog it's gorgeous but i think i think i think i think let me just grab it i have a sneaking suspicion let me just grab it so sea and sand is on page 40 and 42 page 45 uh, it says white with a pearlescent sheen so let me just grab we have white and we have vanilla so let me just pick these up so that you get a better look Certainly in person, I would say this is vanilla, not white. Um, this is this is white. The lights are bleaching it out a bit, but this is this is definitely creamer. 
No snow with you, Lorna. But we'll need webbed feet. Yeah, a lot of it about. Hi, Pam. Um, friend at work. This is B. Friend at work has a perfect Essex accent, but is from Glasgow. When she speaks to family, she talks with a very strong and very, very strong accent. Uh, I used to work with a girl who, who was from Glasgow. Um, and I always thought she had a strong Glaswegian accent until she went home for a long weekend. And then when she came back, it was almost impossible to understand what she said. And I do have a reasonable ear for a Glaswegian accent because um, we are a Scots family and we spent a lot of time in Scotland. So, yeah, just saying. Right, I'm just going to grab a... Uh, uh, one of those, an ink pad. Now, I am using, and I thought I had saved somewhere. Now, of course, I can't find it. Where did I put it? I am using Real Red, and I'm using um, Vellum. And I thought I had kept out a scrap. Oh, I have a Vellum. So, I am colouring my Vellum in order to use it. Don't need that anymore. Um, and I'm using Real Red ink. Um, so this is Real Red Light Blend. This is Dark Real Red. So I'm just going to show you. This is red, as in Real Red. And let me just grab one other thing. Let's bring in Poppy Parade as well. Um, this is just if you find the Scottish hardest to understand. I think, Wendy, it'll depend where the accent's from. Um, so that's real red dark. This is real red light on vellum. Um, cherry cobbler. Helps if you get the right end. That's cherry cobbler dark. This is Cherry Cobbler Light. Then Poppy Parade Dark. And Poppy Parade Light. So this is they this is they on vellum. Let me just grab that's Poppy Parade card. Then we've got, we have got, where are my regals? There are my regals. Real red. And cherry cobbler. So these are our three definite reds. Now, Real Red, Cherry Cobbler, Poppy Parade. Poppy Parade, Dark. I'm very happy with that. That works for me. So Poppy Parade, very happy. <laughs> Not Margaret. She can, you can understand Margaret. Okay. Uh, this is Cherry Cobbler. And I don't dislike Cherry Cobbler. Now, that's interesting, Audrey. I think Aberdeen, an Aberdeen accent, is quite an easy one to understand. But is that just because I don't have an issue with Scots accents? Anyway, so yes, Cherry Cobbler is quite a good match. Real Red, not so much. That's Real Red Dark. So I'm actually using, on vellum, I'm using, to go with my Real Red, I'm using Cherry Cobbler because the real red just washed out. So just so you're aware, the colours on um, on vellum do come out very different from the colours on white. So that's really all I'm saying about that. So let me show you what else I have already got available. It'd be good if I included everything I have pre-done. So Let's get that out of the way for the moment. I will be doing some more stamping. Um, so I've got out of white vellum, so without colour, I've got two wreaths. 
because I want to layer those up. And I'm going to have one going one way and one going the other. I've got some hearts. Now here you go. So this is a cherry cobbler heart on real red. And it's really not a bad match. Um, real red, which obviously I have die cut from. Um, a piece of the pearl pearlescent paper, which I've used the scripty embossing folder just to give it a subtle background. Um, I've die cut from the wreath builder uh, the heart with love in the middle of it and I don't want the love bit so let's get rid of that. So I've got that. I've got a lot of, well I say a lot, I've got um, six of the hearts. Don't need the L. I've got the bow die cut in real red and in vellum with cherry cobbler and then I've got a vanilla mat so just so as you know that's what I have got but what I also want is to do some real red stamping onto very vanilla and I'm going to just cut a piece off my very vanilla this is actually my scraps but I haven't got any big enough scraps so I'm just going to cut and I'm going to deliberately cut it crooked so that I know that it's a scrap now. Um, so that's my very vanilla piece. And then what I need is to tidy my desk, frankly. So I need my heart stamp and I will also for the inside of my card have happy heart day now for those of you that do Galentine's Day this is quite a good one for that because it's not happy Valentine's <coughs> excuse me it's not happy Valentine's it's Galentine's um, now as ever I'm going to prep my stamp just by rubbing it on my hand so that I get all the um, release stuff off it and again do the same. Right, okay, so I'm going to put the sentiment on the inside of my card so I'm not too worried about that for the moment but for the very moment I'm going to stain this so what I'm going to do just to reduce that a bit is just ink up with some Versamark which will help protect my stamps a little from the staining of red so actually I'm going to go that way one two three I'm going to clean off my stamp and I'm actually going to try with Poppy Parade instead. And the reason I'm going to do that is for exactly the same reason that I showed you the blends on vellum. This for me is not a brilliant match. It's not bad, but it's not brilliant. Um, I'll keep the real red out. So what I want to see is whether Poppy Parade is a better match. Now you'll see that I've cleaned my stamp and um, and it's not stained. Uh, Mary, they, yes, we're all getting delayed all the time at the moment. S um, what can I say? Uh, I am tracking every single one of my customers' parcels. Um, I have 28 parcels currently being tracked. Um, and the only ones that are getting through um, are the more recent orders. So, but Lorna has had one, so that's good to know. So they are coming through. I've got one, I think, that is this side of the channel. Um, the others, I think, are all at an illegal rave um, in, in Frankfurt. I can't think of any other reason why they'd want to be there. 
lucky if never received a Valentine's from your hubby. Okay, mine's normally very good at Valentine's Day, um, to be fair. So, here's my question. Am I going to want Poppy Parade or... I think I am going to go real red. I think it is better. Um, what I can tell you, for those of you... Good morning, Kay, from Kansas. For those of you who are still waiting for orders, and as I say, I'm currently tracking 28 orders, um, there is a new tracking system that's... Um, that's about to be launched, which may make it easier to track things. Um, I, th I think the good news, let's concentrate on good news. Um, I think the good news about this is that things are on that, that the more recent orders are actually getting through quite well. I'm just going to cut that off so I can do angles, um, which I think is actually good news because it means that when the backlog has been addressed, um, things will be actually not that difficult to get out of Europe. Uh, actually, I think I want to go the other way up, but anyway. So B, you've got your parcel from the 8th. That's good to know. Okay, stamping scrub or chamois. Deb is ready to head for bed in you're from Iowa but you're getting ready to head to, I'm assuming Deb that you do shifts or something if you're going to bed in the morning or is it early hours morning maybe it's two o'clock in the morning uh right stamping scrub or chamois um the stamping scrub is um it's if you're doing lots and lots of stamping so when I was doing face-to-face -face classes, you know, back in the bad old days when we could actually meet people, um, I used to take a, a scrub um, and it gets into the nooks and crannies. Um, and I, like UK, I like it, but I use both. So the chamois is very good for me for things like videos because it's quick. I just have to get it out. Oh, you're retired, Deb. Okay, you're a night owl. Fair enough. Yours from the 22nd is due today. It's your larger order. Yeah, I think anything that was shipped after about the 20th is coming through um, really quite well. Um, I know some people who have had things that were on back order delivered before their main order. Uh, which is slightly ironic, but um, but yeah, I think I think my positive out of this is things are moving. They are moving very slowly. Um, my main order, my my paper and ribbon shares, which were placed at Crack of Sparrow on the fifth, the morning of the fifth, well, the night of the fifth. Um, those are still progressing slowly. Uh, but they are progressing. And as I say, I am tracking everything as it's shipped. I am tracking. They are doing their best, Wendy. And I don't honestly think they could do anything more than they are doing. Um, I've heard, although I can't see this on their websites. Um, I've heard that uh, DHL and DPD aren't shipping out of Europe to the UK at the moment. Yes, you're right, Baz. You need the, for the scrub, you do need the, the, the mist um, to get into all the nooks and crannies. So you do need the, the scrub to be misted, as it were. And you do need to as you do with the chamois, you do need to actually clean them every now and again. I've never tried it in the washing machine, Baz. Does it work? What sort of temperature do you put it in? Margaret, people are never late. You don't have to be here at the beginning. You haven't missed a huge amount, apart from me whiffling. Because um, most of this I prepped in advance. So, Baz, what temperature do you wash it at? Because both of mine are really quite ill. In fact, I say both. I've got three um, and they really could be 
could do with getting going. So if you can tell me what temperature you wash up, uh, wash them at, that would be great. You're right, Kay. This the spray mist does help, um, does help keep them in condition, and it does last forever. I've got a large bottle, which I ordered. I'm I'm going to be in a demo for five years come July, and I'm I've had two of the little sprays, and I'm on my first still on my first large bottle um so yeah and i've used them for class anywho so i have put my hoojima flip my um pearlescent onto my real red then i am going to attach my preferably clean um wreaths and i'm having one go the other way Oh, Jenny's done it, has she? She's even bleached them, so they're now white, not purple. Okay, I will ask Jenny. I have washed them with washing up liquid, and they, they bleach a little with that. Um, but I haven't been brave enough to put them in the washing machine yet. So I'm going to layer these up so that there's lots and lots. I'll put it on the back there. So there's lots and lots of leaves. Um, interesting Wendy you use your chamois for polymer and your scrub for rubber okay yep Audra is the same she's, she'll be five in June and she's on her first bottle as well oh okay Jan what temperature do you put yours into the wash at are you doing a 30, a 20 or a 40 so I'm just going to add some little dots of liquid adhesive to my wreaths and then pop them down. You bleached yours and it went pink, Mary. OK, I think I think certainly if I was putting it in my washing machine, I would be using a dark wash or I'd only be putting them in with a dark wash. Oops. Um, ooh. Don't do that, you silly woman. Do not put your thing down and then squish it in the... I pushed it. It wasn't really what I had in mind. Never mind, it will stick. So that's going that way. So this one wants to go that way. So I need to put the adhesive on this side. I'm in a bit of a wreath mood at the moment, I'm just saying. Um, oh yes, and I was saying my shares, my paper and ribbon shares are still in Germany. Uh, use a colour catcher in the wash with the chamois, chamois. okay. Sorry, someone's just sent me a Facebook message. Not really what I wanted in the middle of a Facebook live particularly as I thought I'd seen the message already. Anywho, right. Right, I'm just going to hold that down for a little bit. Um, so can someone tell me which temperature they put the thing in the wash? Dark wash 30 or 40 degrees. OK, thank you, because that's the kind of important bit is what temperature you use. So that is my can you see we've got a nice layering going and I've now got glue all over my hands and then what I want I'm going to be building here um, and then have my love over here so I think actually I'm going to put my love down first with some dimensional so let's do don't seem to have the right bits of the edge of my dimensional so I'll use small dimensionals oops ah, everything's sticking to me thank you Kay right so we'll pop that there and then everything else is going to be here and what I want is a heart with a vellum heart behind it. <laughs> I 
Dark washes are great. I love a dark wash. Um, I have to say most of our washes, because it's just the two of us, um, we don't have a huge amount of washing. So I do mostly do combined washes uh, with a colour catcher. Um, but if I have enough for two washes, then they go into a light and a dark wash or a light or sorry or a white and a um a white and a mixed so i'm just going to pop some glue on the back of all of my vanilla hearts so that it can start drying the um tombow takes quite a while to dry and when you add it to vellum it's going to take a lot longer to dry because vellum is not absorbent uh ironing there's a concept i don't quite get baz i always said that when i got together with anyone um i was very happy to put things in the wash for them but if they thought i was going to do any ironing they clearly were with the wrong person um i'm not a great fan of ironing when i was in the navy reserve we used to have to iron things to within an inch of their lives and I used to exchange if I was on a base I would exchange polishing people's shoes so that yeah you're with me Wendy polishing people's shoes um, would be exchanged for ironing because I was very happy to polish any number of people of shoes rather than do ironing um, I, found, I find polishing shoes to a mirror finish is so therapeutic. In my days doing Amdrams, there were a number of shows I was in where the men would, use, would wear bucket boots, so kind of like um, what you'd expect Cavaliers to wear, those really high thigh boots, but baggy thigh boots. And I would, between shows, so at the end of one show, um, I would sit down and polish the shoes or boots rather ready for the next day's show uh, because the, the polish actually takes a while to set properly. And then of course you can cheat. You can use some stuff called parade, parade gloss, which is a bit of a softer black. Buy clothes that don't need ironing. Absolutely. Or um, what my brother used to do was um, just iron the collar and cuffs because he reckoned that by the time he got into the office his shirts would have the creases would have dropped out of his shirts <laughs> two shirts in the ironing pile good idea right okay so we've got all these lovely hearts and I'm going to pop those round this side I'd be happier if I could get the dark smudges off I had a dark cutting plate on my cut and emboss it's not actually what your take your pick is made for but it's very good at picking up little bits of dark right okay so I'm going to use small dimensionals for these um, because and and a cat's hair apparently. How does how do I get cat hair on my dimensionals when the cats are not generally allowed in my studio? Someone please explain that to me. So I'm going to start with three on dimensionals. And just actually, yeah, I'll have three on dimensionals and three not. So the ones that are not, I'm going to turn over again and add some more Tombow. So that can be beginning to set. You were in the TA, you did enough ironing to last forever. Absolutely, I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, the Navy Reserve is the same basic idea, just for those of us who have an affinity with water, I guess. Surfboard. Okay. 
hmm, don't think I've come across a surfboard thing. And of course, when I was, because I did fashion design at college, um, and I used to have to do quite a lot of ironing for that. But the interesting thing when I was at college doing my ironing for that was that you um, you only had one temperature on the iron, and that was incredibly hot. Hi, Pam. Um, and you just had to be careful if you were using delicate fabrics. So I'm going to do these sort of in pairs. So one stuck to the ground, as it were, and one in the air. Hi, Ilsa. Right, so that's that. Then I'm going to have a bow, and I haven't quite made my mind up on the bow, other than I now can't find the other bit of my... I did another vellum bit. Check my sleeves. No, 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 no. Okay, won't be using the other bit of vellum then. It's not in there still. Not caught there. Oh, back of the back of the stamp pack. There we are. So I can't decide whether I'm going to use that or come here. No, not that one. Or that. No, it's too white. This is some of the Pampered Pets ribbon, but it's got white. It is real red, but it's got white down the middle, which is too white. Super Bowl and Six Nations Rugby starts. Yes. Used to live in Twickenham. Used to be the time when we would um, not be able to watch the rugby if we wanted to go shopping at all. So I'm going to layer this up again. Lots and lots of layering going on today. And I think I'm going to pop this on top of the, the, the bits that are just bows. I'm going to offset that a wee bit. And then these I'm going to go chiefs. I have to say I know almost nothing about um, American football. My husband watches it probably more than he watches either soccer, as you would call it in the States, football, um, or rugby. I was brought up as a rugby girl because my father was a referee for the London circuit. Uh, he was one of the youngest referees on the London circuit because uh, when he was doing his national service, he had a rather nasty injury to his left arm, which is his predominant arm. So he is left handed um, and it meant that he kept getting injured when he was playing rugby. So he went into refereeing instead. So that's going to go there. That's going to go on top there. So we're getting lots of layering. Now, I think I will use a dimensional. You're a, dimen you're a rugby girl from rugby. Absolutely, Baz. So I'm going to use a dimensional. But before I take this off, you love the commercials and the halftime show. I'm assuming, when, Kay, when you say football you mean American football um, I'm going to take my real red marker dark and I'm just going to run it around the edge Ooh, I might use my cherry cobbler instead yep yep I'm going to use my cherry cobbler instead um, I'm going to run it around the edge of my dimensional because this is going to look quite a lot up and it's not got Whereas these have got quite a lot of surround, um, the bow hasn't. So I'm just going to add that so that the edge, I don't know that you're going to be able to see it. Let me just pop the lid back on. Um, the edge is now, oh, I think you can, is now dark. And then I can peel that off like that 
and pop that. Ooh, I've got a bit of I've got a bit of dimensional showing through just there. So again, I'm going to take my cherry cobbler and do that. Now, the other thing that I was thinking of adding was some of the resin hearts, which are from the snail mail. You've never seen rugby. Oh, if you like, if you like football at all, rugby is is a not dissimilar sport other than you can no you can still run with the ball um so yes i can't decide whether i want to put some of these on or not you struggle with tiny embellishments you want to take your pick at all um i think i might actually <laughs> yes american rugby actually would be better it, it is a better description Shinty fan, of course. Yes, Shinty country. Uh, my sport at school was lacrosse, which is cl is played quite a lot in Canada, I think. Do I want that there, or do I just want? To? Actually, I'm just going to dot them. Have a few dotted around. Just kind of tucked in underneath. Um, and you can see there that I have actually coloured one with one of the white ones with a blend, which you can. Now, I'm using the pointy end. Let's see if they're reasonably good. To American football is based on rugby. Is it, Baz? I never knew that. Um, yes, they're a take your pick kind of embellishment. Mm, there, I think. You know me, I'm going to want an odd number. And I know I haven't got an odd number of stamped things, but I've got an odd number of hearts because I've got the love, the that. You played lacrosse too. I loved lacrosse, apart from, I have one, I may have said this before, I have one bugbear with lacrosse. Uh, we were told when we first started playing to pick up our um, lacrosse sticks with our well, to pick up our lacrosse sticks, sticks. Now I am right-handed, but I'm slightly um, left-handed as well. So there are some things I do left-handed and some I do right-handed. Not convinced by that bow. Um, bear with me while I just rearrange that a bit. Um, so I picked my lacrosse stick up with my left hand at the top, which felt normal to me. And I was made to pick it up with my right hand at the top. Um, and I didn't like it. Did not like it. Um, the difference between hockey and lacrosse, as far as I was concerned, was that in uh, hockey, certainly women's hockey, I'm going to see what one of these looks like. You loathed hockey. OK. Um, in women's hockey, you're not allowed to... No. You're not allowed to have the stick above your shoulder, I think think I'm right in that um, and in the cross you have to have your stick above your shoulder otherwise it the ball falls out just saying uh, right I do want something on top of that bow don't think a pearl uh, an opal is going to be right either but let's try no it's going to be too blue Netball I liked. I loved netball. We weren't allowed to play it as, as at secondary school, though. Uh, we were lacrosse, lacrosse, or lacrosse. And then rounders in the summer. Uh, that's the box I want, I think. Got one last possibility for an embellishment. This is current, as opposed to most of these, which aren't. Nope. Nope, we're going to leave it. We are going to leave it. It's fine. Can't always add extra bits. One might try, but one may not always do so. Right, I'm just going to work out which... So I've scored this at the top and I just need to 
find out which whether the front or the back is longer because sometimes one of them will be so the this is very fractionally shorter than the baseball two rounders was usually at the end of term for fun okay um, now again I'm going to use real red and I'm going to prep it with a bit of Versamark because this is another clean stamp that I could do without staining red given a chance <laughs> okay Wendy but yes theoretically certainly this the, there was another school in the town that I was brought up in um, which is where you went wasn't it B didn't you go to Northwood College um, and they played hockey and I don't think you were allowed to raise the stick above your shoulder there maybe it was just Northwood College <laughs> oh Margaret that makes me laugh um, yes my my mother was a great tennis player um, and she and my father spent a small fortune on sending my brother and I for tennis lessons I don't know why they bothered um, I could serve really really well into the court next door yes B you did go to Northwood College I thought you did you're not supposed to oh raise the stick above your shoulder yeah in men's hockey you are allowed to uh, but women's hockey certainly at school I didn't think you were but as I say in lacrosse the whole point of lacrosse is to have it above your head and then for your opponent to try and knock the ball, ball out of the basket at the top of the stick by bashing the basket so that's going to go there and turn it over and press <laughs> yeah as I say I had a really good serve really good serve apart from the fact it was onto the wrong court um so my question is shall I add if I can find the dear things yes I will I'm just going to do one final touch and that is I've inked up my heart with Versamark again just to protect my stamp and I loved rounders and I loved netball but I might actually can I go the whole way across no I'm not gonna um, I might risk it you were school county champions for many years I don't know B we sent a lacrosse team to oh it's going to work we sent a lacrosse team to the States um, and our poor goalie didn't know what had hit her because in the States the goalie wears almost worked uh, the goalie wears American football protection you know all the padding Whereas in the UK, certainly at that stage, all you had was basically glorified cricket pads um, that covered both your legs and your trunk, and then a, a face mask. So like a cage over the front of your face. So there we go. That is our card. Woohoo! If they were using te wooden tennis rackets, Audrey, they would not be able to hit the ball so hard. They'd just break the racket. So there we go. So that is my Arranger Wreath Valentine's card. Thank you for the hearts. Um, and you played walking netball before lockdown. Oh. Um, right, we are nearly at the time of... Um, Thank you, Kay. We're nearly at the time where it's the Spot Challenge release. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what I've made for this week, which does use the dra Dragonfly Garden again. 
because you know I kind of like it um, thank you Margaret thank you Audrey thank you Lorna so this is my project for this week's drag um, spot challenge uh, which is a color challenge and it's Knight of Navy soft sea foam and petal pink and here's the thing this is on vellum and it is Knight of Navy but when you heat it with clear embossing powder and I am going to show you this um, it goes purple so let me just grab my Knight of Navy and a piece of thing and my clear embossing powder and just show you because it took me it surprised me not a little so clear embossing powder Versamark Knight of Navy and of course because it's on night on um, on vellum it doesn't dry instantly of course on a piece of vellum that I could get into my box would be even better there we go Clear embossing powder all over my vellum now, but never mind. So at this point, it still looks like Knight of Navy. Thank you, B. So let me close that before I put my fist in it, and let me just grab this and clean off my hearts and grab my trusty cheese board and my heat tool because I've just I, this this just blew my mind oh the, the sun's come out woohoo now let's see if you'll probably find it won't do it this time No, you see, this time it's not gone purple. Oh, no, it is. It's going purple. It's not as bad as the first version, but it's not great. Uh, let me find some. It's gone purple. It's not as purple, and as it's drying, I mean, as, as it's cooling down, it's going purple. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. But anyway, so it is, this is Knight of Navy ink, and it's just bizarre. Anyhow, thank you very much for joining me. Now, the idea about behind these is... Um, that they're supposed to inspire you to take part in the challenge. So we would love to see your challenge, your um, your pieces using this colour combo. Shiny, you're, we're just finishing up, but you'll be able to catch it on replay in about 10 minutes, I should think. Night, Pam. Pam Lewis, that is. Because um, we've got two Pams on. So, yes, so this is going live on my uh, website in about six minutes. And is this week's colour, or well, this week's The Spot Challenge. Um, and I, I kind of forgot I had these hoops. Um, so I need to use them. And this is today's card. So there you go. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Um, by all means, leave a comment. Uh, whether you're watching the replay on Facebook or on YouTube, and I will happily respond. Um, and have a fantastic week. Try and say, stay dry and warm and cool and wherever you're from. I hope the weather is not too dire. And I will see you all, go, uh, all again very soon. My next live is on YouTube on Thursday at 3 p.m. UK time. And then... Um, on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. UK time. So thank you very much indeed, and I will see you again very soon.